Hi, this is Julie. Hello, this is Graham. Hello, Graham. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right, thanks. Yes, I'm. I'm in London town, and uh, you're in New York. Yeah, I'm in um, actually out in Long Island. Oh, okay. So there's there's trees and yes, you're <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and actually a sunny day. Oh, lovely. Hey, uh, now uh, we're here to talk about uh, homework. Now this is the memoir you did of your Hollywood years, but it's now out in paperback, published by W and N. That's right. Yep. Yep. Uh, so a lot of people going into a book like this, uh, they go, oh, where do I start? But you had this sort of unfair advantage in that you have kept journals for years. Yes, I did. I mean, there are gaps when I didn't, but mostly for some fairly important parts of my life, I did keep journals. And when, when I was writing, I was so grateful to have them at hand because it, it helped so much. And when, like, do you remember the moment when you decided to start writing journals? Well, I always thought I loved it as a child. I mean, I would write journals, but mostly they were, you know, had a good stew for lunch today <laughs> or something <laughs> dumb like that and met this boy he's quite nice but i'm not sure you know that kind of thing but as i got older as life became really really enriched then of course the journals became a, a lot more detailed and, and <laughs> interesting i hope and when you went back and looked at the journals were there stories or moments and you kind of thought, that is not how i remembered it at all like you know the way that you tell yourself well, a little bit of both uh sometimes i would read something and think my god that was prophetic and how weird or no i don't remember it that way i'm glad i have the journal and you know, it, you do kind of get rooted in memory, which can play tricks, but a lot of the time it was just a very happy confirmation. And I think the most surprising thing about your, your book is, you know, because it's the Hollywood years and you were working and you were producing these incredible movies, these hit movies, and yet so much of your life was domestic. So much of your life was, you know, there's a leak. There's, we need, we need somebody. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I had, you know, eventually we had five children, and uh, there were schools and and PTA meetings and uh, doctors and dentists, and you become a full time chauffeur driving them around for many years. And obviously, uh, Graham, I had wonderful help and a lot of adventures along the way and a lot of laughs too. Now, the you going to Broadway? So this was the boyfriend. This is what. Broadway you. This is what brought me to America in the first place, yes. But for somebody that come, came from a quiet town, village actually, it was quite an, an assault at first. And I suppose you're on Broadway. You did Broadway for, you know, numerous years. And you were at the top of your game, winning Tonys, in these fabulous shows. So you must have thought that you were like as big a star as you could be. Well, I certainly, I can put it another way, I certainly never thought that I'd be asked to do films. And I think no matter what you are doing, you're, you're learning your craft all the time. I mean, everybody, I still am, um, even though I do much less than I used to, but it, it, there's always something to uh, discover or learn. And, and I was racing to catch up with myself as much as possible. And then, you know, Hollywood came to call. Well, actually, Walt Disney came to call, really, because I mean... Yes, he, he came to see one of the shows I was in, which was Camelot on Broadway with the lovely Richard Burton, and uh, came backstage and asked if I would like to come to Hollywood to make a movie, Mary Poppins. And I was utterly, you know, enchanted because I had no idea he was going to ask me that. But I said, oh, Mr. Disney, I'd love to, but I'm afraid I'm I'm pregnant. And he said, oh, that's OK, we can wait. <laughs> and he did. I mean, it is extraordinary that he he took such a kind of gamble on you, you know, that the other studios... He had a talent for that, yeah. uh, Graham. He really did. He had a talent for spotting talent, I guess. And uh, there were so many people that, that he helped in this industry. And, and he mostly, once the film was underway and we were busy filming, he didn't, we loved it when he came down onto the set. And it was a sort of lovely feeling when he did, but he didn't do it very often. He just let us get on with it. And looking at, at your career, by the time you were sort of 30, in your early 30s, you'd seemed like you'd 
you'd had enormous success, you know, radio at home, the West End, Broadway, albums, Oscar, you know, all of that. Was there someone guiding your career or was it just you and your gut instinct and luck? What was it? No, no, it, it's a pretty wonderful team if you're as fortunate as I was. You know, obviously I had an agent and I had a very smart husband too, who was a film director, of course, in his own right. And my first husband, Tony Walton, was also incredibly knowledgeable and scripts were shared and discussed. And, you know, they don't just pass across your desk every day of the week. And in those days, I needed to earn money and I, I was advised by good people and I had a lot of help. And so, and then of course, I think your own instinct kicks in too. And your hit race is incredible. You know, you know, the amount of hits you've had is sort of unfair. It's <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> yes. but, but but there have been there were a, a few kind of misses along the way. Something like uh, Torn Curtain, which seems like you know it's Alfred Hitchcock, it's Paul Newman, it's you. That yeah, I mean, been... I had a pretty good time regardless. But yes, it wasn't the most successful. Did you know? I I always think it's interesting, you know, because nobody sets out to make a movie that doesn't do that well. But uh, so no, what, what, did you? Did you feel it in your water while you were making it or was it a big surprise? Um, no, I think truly, as you say, you never set out to make a bad movie and you're trying very hard. And Paul was delightful. A lot of it has to do with the times and uh, what is popular and whether big budget movies or small movies are, are in fashion. And uh, I think that it, this just sort of fell in the cracks a little bit and, and the standard that Hitchcock had set for himself, you know, you can only fail or, or stay the same after a certain amount of time because he made so many movies and some you win and some you don't, I guess. And um, I think Thoroughly Modern Millie, it, I love that film. I had such a good time too. That cast, I mean, you, Mary Tyler Moore. Um, I Carol know, Channing. Carol Channing, yeah. And Beatrice. Jimmy Fox, James Fox, yeah. Oh. Just... Also, the director, George Roy Hill, was the director who the movie before that I made was Hawaii and the utmost opposite of the subject of, of Thoroughly Modern Millie. And he was so talented. He, he managed this great epic film and then this charming kind of sweet comedy, which we all so enjoyed. And it actually was one of the uh, largest grossing movies at the time for Universal. And uh, so uh, it did pretty well for itself. I had a ball making it, I must say. And it was a totally original thing. It wasn't a stage musical first. It was a No, it was no, a it became one, yeah. but it, no, it wasn't. And it was a real original. And they are quite rare when you think about it. Usually they were always something that was the hit on Broadway at the time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, amazing that that just came out, you know, from nowhere. Well, I guess it's a bit like Victor Victoria, that that, that was another one that, you know. Well, that, that was Blake and that was an original, yes, full film. And actually, talking of Blake, he directed, how many you worked? We eight? did about seven or eight movies together, yes. And before the first one, did you think, oh, this is a bit risky. This is, this is putting well, our yes. relationship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, we, we had just begun to uh, start dating and, and um, here's this incredibly charismatic man. And I'm thinking, oh my God, I hope I can uh, do what he asks of me on film. And, and uh, uh, I hope it lives up to his expectations and I hope I can manage it. But well, uh, the film was a huge flop, which was called Darling Lily. But somehow we stayed together for the following 43 years, Graham. So there you are. I guess, does it take the pressure off that, you know, <laughs> the, 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 you know the, 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 that film? Did? I remember I went to see that film in Bandon, County Cork. We paid money and sat in rows and watched Darling Lily. Oh, well, it was pretty, very pretty. And the thing is, it was a slightly smaller concept. And then the studio... Uh, based on the success of, well, you know, all the other musicals, wanted to sort of pump it up into something bigger than it really was. And uh, I think, you know, that didn't help much. Well, I guess it's that pressure, isn't it? If you're a huge star, people want another huge hit. Yes. And uh, yeah, it's hard to um, 
constant. I mean, you simply cannot stay up on at the top of the flagpole uh, time after time after time. It is not possible at all. You just take them. You, you, if you're lucky, it's successful. If not, you learn something from it. And they're all delightful to make. And as we said, you don't start out to make a flop. Well, you have been flapping around the top of that flagpole for some time. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing Thank okay. You. You're doing well, okay. I'm very, very, very lucky. Believe me. Um, are you? Oh, by the way, this is the paperback, but of uh, volume two. Are, are you working on volume three already, or are you? Yes, I will be. Uh, uh, we're just. Uh, my, you know, I work with my daughter Emma, who's a wonderful writer, and we've. Oh gosh, we've done. I think something like thirty-three books together to date, and it's an absolute joy to work with her. And I feel that I actually could barely manage without now because we speak the same language, we finish each other's sentences and have a very good time most of the time doing doing them. They take a long time and, and really though, without her, I could not have managed this first or second memoir. And lovely though, to be, to have a way of spending so much time with your daughter. Must yes, be. I mean, that's a gift. Yeah. It really is. And listen, we're going to take a little break for some music. Uh, this is a song from Cherry Tree Lane. Now, is it true, the Sherman Brothers, they wrote uh, Feed the Birds, is, is it true that this was Walt Disney's favourite song? Yes, I believe it was his favourite song. I mean, he loved Supercalifragilistic and all of those, but this one I think moved him very much. And he always said, play that one, play that one for me. <laughs> A uh, classic, and uh, Dame Julie is on the line now. Hey, fancy a game? It's time for Dame Julie Andrews, True or False? Now, some tips going into this, uh, Dame Julie. Most of them mm -hmm. are true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and there's no prizes. <laughs> uh, okay, here we go. Uh, you, uh, you, you, may, you may need to consult your diaries. Mm. Oh, now, apparently there was a poll, there was a poll of the 100 greatest Britons of all time as chosen by the British public. Um, true or false, you were number 60 on that poll. Oh, uh, could the answer possibly be, I really don't know? You could certainly say that. I know that uh, it was mentioned to me once, but I don't know what number or where my particular uh, body of work fell on the list. Uh, so you have to tell me. Yeah, I will. Clever swerve. Uh, you were on the <laughs> list. You were on the list. But in fact, you were one place higher. You were number 59. You were really? You were 11 places ahead of Jane Austen. Good God. That doesn't seem fair. And she was around for much longer uh, than me. Spinning <laughs> in her grave. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Rightly so, I think. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, true or false, you once cooked dinner for Bruce Lee. Uh, lunch it was actually. Um, he came to lunch and uh, uh, we saw him a couple, three, you know, a few times. And he, oh, he was a lovely guy and it was a very interesting lunch, believe me. Uh, why or how does Dame Julie Andrews meet Bruce Lee? Uh, through uh, friends and Blake was, uh, my husband was a, um, I think he was a brown belt, black belt, I'm not quite sure which, but uh, he loved the martial arts. And of course, a chance to meet Bruce was couldn't be passed up. So uh, he very kindly deigned to come on over. And our son was taking sort of early uh, martial arts classes. And so one way and another, um, uh, there was suddenly was Bruce Lee, a lovely, uh, vital young man, and, and he, gave a demonstration for us. And then in the middle of lunch, I have to tell you this, Greg, <laughs> it's unbelievable. In the middle of lunch, we were all sitting and chatting and so on. And uh, he felt that a lot of ballet dancers would benefit from martial arts workouts and training. It would strengthen and so on and so forth. And he pushed his chair back, but he sat on it. Uh, he said, could a dancer suddenly do this? And he literally, uh, exploded out of the chair and did this incredible leap up into the air, several feet above the table, came back down and sat down again. And I have never seen anybody do that. And it was something I'll never forget. I, I, I'm not surprised. No. <laughs> I was worried for your dishes. 
Uh, well, no, they were all right. We had finished, I think. <laughs> uh, true or false, you once played an egg on the London stage. Yes. Oh, undoubtedly, I remember it very well. Yes, I played Humpty Dumpty the in the pantomime of Humpty Dumpty. The title role. I mean, there's no shame in it. Yes, yeah. yes, even even then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was at the London Casino, I'm told, uh, yes. Christmas 48. That's when that and was. And it was my first pantomime. Oh, wow. Oh. And my first entrance was to topple off the wall and emerge from the egg. So there you are. <laughs> oh, so you weren't stuck in the egg for the whole thing? Oh, no, no. <laughs> no, thank God, no. Uh, now, uh, true or false, according to the 1974 book, there's only one great wangdoodle left. Ah, yes, absolutely true. I mean, in my mind, absolutely true. Um, and wangdoodle is, <laughs> was described in my dictionary as a humorous, mythical creature of fanciful an undesigned nature, and I thought, oh, maybe I can design it or state it or imagine it. So uh, 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 I firmly believe it's really a, a kind of medieval uh, uh, creature that, that, in my mind anyway, that, that lasted because he was such a honey bun. A wang doodle. Very good. Oh. Uh, now, here we go. Uh, true or false, you have played Mary Poppins twice on screen. It depends what you mean by on screen. Um, I recreated her for television, but I don't think on screen I played her twice, but you tell, tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, it's true because you played her obviously in the 64 film, but in the 200, 2004 animated short, The Cat That Looked at a King, you also... Oh. I think, yes, I didn't realise Poppins was in that. Hmm. Like I say... I don't think it was Poppins. I don't know why, but I could be very, very wrong. Like I say, we're not playing for a car. I really wouldn't worry about it. Uh, oh, <laughs> I was hoping. But there you are. <laughs> uh, true or false, there is a Julie Andrews rose. Yes. Yes, that is true. It, it, it is true. It's an yes. orangey salmon pink rose. It was named after you in 1992. Yes, and, and just recently... Uh, that that rose, I believe, at least I've heard, uh, Graham, is now no longer available. But just recently, another lovely rose over here in America. That was an English rose, which was very pretty. And uh, uh, but just recently, there's been another rose that I'm very honoured to have named after me. Oh, true, right? Um, uh, two, yeah, two roses. How about that? Uh, uh, true or false? When you made the 1968 film Star, you set a record for the most costumes worn by an actress in one movie. Well, I would imagine that's true. It was something like 96 costumes, something like that. And imagine how many fittings per costume you need to, you know, get the costume right and, and, and produce it. So it's at least three fittings for each outfit, I would think. Isn't that the one where you I wore real jewels as well? Oh, yes, um, from Cartier. And uh, my God, that it wasn't until then that I realised what a really good set of pearls can do for a lady. Um, uh, <laughs> true or false? You collect ceramics and you can throw a pot. Uh, no, I can't throw a pot, but I do collect ceramics. I wish I could. I've always wanted to, and so it's half truth. But no, I've never been. A I've never started to learn. I'd love to, but um, um, lockdown, lockdown, Dame Julie. Now is the time. Well, yes, but I'm. Uh, I'm sorry, Graham. I'm a very busy <laughs> lady, and I've got to set it all up, and uh, you know. Uh, where would I put it and so on and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and finally, yeah, true or false, your nickname in 1947, this seems so unlikely because it's such a terrible nickname, your nickname in 1947 was The Prodigy with Pigtails. Yes, that was the sort of uh, uh, underbilling under my name, yes. Isn't it, isn't it crazy? <laughs> That's a terrible nickname for anybody. <laughs> Prodigy with Pigtails. It's amazing I survived it, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, Dame Julie Andrews will let you get back to your busy life and possibly learning how to throw a pot. Yes, I, well, don't be surprised because I've always wanted to. Oh, Christmas, that's Christmas sorted. Uh, uh, <laughs> pots from Dame Julie. Well, the mind boggles, it really does. 
<laughs> Homework, a memoir of my Hollywood years is available now in paperback published by WNN, uh, written with Emma Walton Hamilton, your daughter. Dame Julie Andrews, an absolute joy. Thanks for joining us. Stay safe, stay sane. Yeah, you stay safe too, Graham. It's <laughs> lovely chatting. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. See you soon, I hope. Bye. <laughs> 